So Dustin Poirier is talking about retiring. He's saying after the Islam fight, he might not do this any longer. So this is exactly what Dustin said. He was talking to CBS Sports. Quote, I'm capable of anything. I can climb back to this spot and fight again for the world title. I can do anything. I can grind back to it. I know I can. It's just that I don't have it in me and I'm not going to do it again. I'm not going to climb that ladder again. I've been doing this a long time. It's a very selfish sport. I'm ready to be a father and be a husband and be home and be into a routine. I wouldn't say I can't do it again. I can do it again. It's just, this is it for me. I'm not sure, man. This could be the last one. I'm still on the fence, win or lose. I just want to be content with my career. It's a thing where I have to digest it and be okay with it because that's how life goes. Of course, I'm looking on the brighter side and trying to be positive that I'm going to finish the story and seal the deal and become the undisputed disputed lightweight champ after my 31st fight in the UFC. What a story that would be. Unquote. I agree with him, man. If he pulls that off, that's going to be like a moment a lot of people remember for a long time, especially against the opponent he's going up against. You know, defeating Islam Makhachev for the lightweight title would be one of the biggest wins in lightweight history. It's not to be a surprise because he's mentioned it before in a valuetainment interview a while ago. He said that the only thing he has now to accomplish in his career is to become the undisputed champion, which is what he set his sights on at the very beginning. So it's understandable if he retires after Islam, win or lose. It's his last title shot. If he wins, he accomplishes his ultimate goal. If he loses, that's it for him. There's nothing left. Now, money always talks, but he did say that he's not going to fight Conor McGregor ever again. I don't believe anybody who says that. That's an easy multi-million dollar fight. Why would you just turn it down? Because Conor says some mean words. I mean, you get to punch the guy in the face, which is beyond anything someone can say to you, right? But if he retires, he had a legendary career, win or lose. One of the greatest lightweights of all time in my my opinion, one of the most persistent fighters and inspiring fighters you can ever see in this sport. If you had a, a friend who wants to start watching MMA, Dustin Poirier is like one of the better role models, as well as being super entertaining when he competes. Sometimes he's a sore winner, but sometimes it's understandable as to why he was against Connor, against Michael Chandler, and against Dan Hooker. Him and Connor had bad blood. Connor said that his wife's in his DMs. Michael Chandler cheated the entire fight. That was one of the dirtiest things ever. I mean, imagine like fish hooking him and all that crap crazy stuff that I mentioned before. And with Dan Hooker, Hooker was talking a lot before the fight, and after Dustin won and proved Dan Hooker wrong, maybe that's why he felt like he had to be a little bit of a sore winner, which is funny because I don't think I've ever seen a fighter who's as much of a sore winner compared to being a sore loser as Dustin. When this guy loses, he never says anything like this, but when he wins, he makes sure to rub it in your face. He'd be the worst person to lose at like a fighting game to or like a basketball game to. He would never let you hear the end of it. Dustin would definitely be the guy that beat you by like one point in a 21 pickup game, grabs the ball and tells you to go home, you're trash, and makes you remember that loss for like a week straight. But at least he didn't do that against Max right? The Max Holloway wins are some of his best wins of his entire career. The first one, not as much. It looks better in hindsight, but Max and Dustin were not really that great back then. Max was super young. I mean, that was his fifth professional fight in his career. First time coming down to the featherweight division and his UFC debut against Dustin. The second win, though, was pretty great. Now we do know he didn't fight. Maximus Holloway would have been a nightmare to get through for Dustin Poirier. Even the second fight itself, it was much more difficult than we remember. If we go back and watch that fight, it was actually way more competitive than we remembered. It's just that first round was so chaotic. We see Max Holloway get stunned by that shifting combination from Dustin Poirier cracking him with the overhand. If that was Maximus, it probably would have been a different story. I don't know who would have won, but I would not have hated Holloway's chances. Regardless though, great wins for Dustin Poirier. One of the biggest memorable things of his career. And of course, the Conor McGregor trilogy. Before the third fight, I mean, you could have regarded it as one of the greatest rivalries in the sport. But the way that the third fight ended with a leg break, instead of a satisfying conclusion, like Dustin dropping him again, finishing him with ground and pound or submitting him after or something like that, that would have been way better and could have gone down as one of the greatest rivalries in the sport. But the second Conor win specifically was an amazing one, probably the highlight of his career. Not only did he beat Conor McGregor, but he beat a very dangerous version of Connor. The Connor we saw in that second fight did have his way with Dustin early on until the calf kick settled in and that's another big adaptation for Dustin to bring into that fight. But at the same time if we're going to be completely honest, losing to Islam will hold true that he was never the undisputed champ. And I hate to say that. It'd be awesome to see Dustin succeed and you know have a big legacy behind him with championships, right? He was never the undisputed champ and that's exactly what he wants to achieve in his life. If he loses to Islam, that will always be the counter argument towards Dustin Poirier was the fact that he never became the undisputed champ. It probably wouldn't happen right away, but like a year or two from now, whenever a Dustin Poirier argument gets brought up about how great he was, the counter to that is always going to be that he wasn't the undisputed champ. And for anybody who's gotten as close as Dustin has, that's a really tough pill to swallow.
follow. For guys like Vink Pickle and like Martin Boudet, it doesn't really matter to them. They never even got close at all, you know? So it's like, oh, you were never undisputed champ. Yeah, thanks, man. I wasn't even ranked. For Dustin, it's like I was in the top five for so long in two different divisions. I fought for the undisputed title twice. I was the interim champion. I defeated some of the best fighters in the sport and I never was able to get it. That is such a heartbreaking thing to think about for Dustin Poirier. It's a big reason as to why a lot of people want to see him succeed. The ups and downs and ups in his career have been super inspirational. Now, if Dustin were to win the title and retire after that, you would have to put him top five lightweights of all time. It would be one of the best feel-good moments of the sport. So props to Dustin, whatever he decides to do, keeps fighting, retires, whatever, man. He's had a great MMA career. Can you say the same about Johnny Bones? Because he's inserted himself into this whole thing somehow. So he questioned, we, we could look at his tweets here. Mr. Boney tweets about Dustin Poirier looking to retire, but it seems like he's implying that the fans don't have a problem with Dustin looking to retire after his next fight, but they have a problem with John Jones retiring after his next fight. But crazy how he doesn't see the difference. Dustin is fighting the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. He's fighting the lightweight champion. He's fighting the best fighter at lightweight. Currently, not in the past, John Jones is confusing fighting Islam with fighting Stipe. Stipe was the best heavyweight years ago. You missed the boat, my man. In fact, he could have fought Stipe back then, but he's still holding the same kind of prestige at fighting Stipe when he's old, hasn't fought in four years, has been knocked out in his last fight, hasn't even been thinking about fighting, full-time firefighter, even is intending on not furthering his career after John Jones. He just wants to fight John and that's it. This is not the same. You are avoiding Tom Aspinall in plain sight, the biggest duck in UFC history. This is a big reason as to why a lot of people are losing the respect for John Jones. He's done great things in terms of like the guys he's beaten and stuff, but then you look at all the controversies on top of now ducking the interim champion who's defending his belt before Jones is. Tom Aspinall is the real champion. They both be a contender to become the champ, and Tom is the one that's looking to defend his first, but you can say, oh, but John Jones is injured. True, okay, John Jones was injured, but John never intended on fighting Tom Aspinall first. He wants to fight Stipe first. Tom has been calling out John Jones from on top of the castles in England to the comedy clubs in California to the streets of Albuquerque. He's been calling out John Jones everywhere, and John just doesn't want to fight him. That is the difference. And what else does John say? He got absolutely eviscerated by the fans. He says after Dustin being tempted to defend the belt if he wins would be understandable. And yeah, the difference here is Dustin would defend it against an actual contender if he became champ. John Jones is defending against a semi-retired fighter. Booger Beard here goes and says, should he defend it against Benson Henderson? I thought this was hilarious. You think that's kind of ridiculous, right? I mean, it's a fair comparison, but of course Dustin would never fight Benson. Benson has been more active than Stipe has. In fact, Benson has fought four times since Stipe last fought. One of the greatest lightweights of all time, Benson Henderson, one of the most underrated fighters ever, has fought four times since Stipe got knocked out by Francis Ngannou. That's how ridiculous this all is. Then someone responds, maybe you should defend your own title. True, brother. True. John Jones goes and replies, I'll be attempting to break my own record. I'll be attempting to break my own record November 9th. Be sure to tune in. How many championships does one need? Bro will try to justify fighting Stipe over anything, which is crazy. The funny thing about him bringing up championships is that Tom Aspinall is the current champion. Stipe is not. So if anything, if you want more championships on your resume, beat Tom Aspinall. He has the belt. Everybody knows when you beat Stipe, Stipe was not the champion. He lost his title already, and he was much older. If he beat Tom Aspinall, he beat Tom in his prime while holding the title. It's literally a bigger win, and Jones knows this as well. Someone tells Jones, bro, just fight Stipe and Tom Aspinall, and nobody will have any complaints. I don't know why you're choosing to take this route. Just fight Stipe and Tom? No, just fight Tom Aspinall. If he wants to fight Stipe, should vacate the belt. But absolutely true. No one would complain if he didn't do this. And Jones replies with, Hey, Tom Brady, you look healthy. Give us two more Super Bowls and I'll personally be more impressed by your career. How did he just compare what he's doing to Tom Brady winning more Super Bowls? This is not even the same kind of thing. Tom Brady winning two Super Bowls means that he went up against the other best teams. John Jones is not going up against the best fighter. He's avoiding them. The Super Bowl is like a tournament. You are forced to go up against the best. John Jones gets to pick and choose who 
his opponent is in championship bouts. Imagine if the Super Bowl allowed Tom Brady to pick whatever team he wanted to go up against in the finals of a Super Bowl. He could pick the losing team that lost in the first bracket. I don't know how football works, but that's what would happen in a tournament. That's the exact kind of thing here. I don't know anything about American football, but isn't it kind of like inspired by military tactics on the battlefield and stuff? That's what I see when I look at American football. Like there's a lineup, there's a front line, formations, and you know, telling certain units to do certain things. It reminds me of like battlefield tactics. But then Jones showed the picture of a lock screen of his phone, which is one of the most sus pictures Jones has ever showed us. It shows his tits and Stipe's mouth, just his mouth smiling next to it. Wait, is Jones fantasies the reasons why he wants to fight Stipe? There may be another motive here as to why Jones really, really wants to fight Stipe. But the quote is from Stipe Miocic. Quote, I want John Jones. Wait, Jones may be reading this in a a different kind of way. I want John Jones. I don't care about the title. I just want to fight John Jones. Jones may have gotten a little too excited when he heard that from Stipe. Then Jones goes and says, even though it's flattering to be pegged, I'm done with the distractions. Got the biggest fight of my life coming up. No one believes that, man. That's the funniest joke Jones has ever said. He's done with distractions. Dick pills, steroids, Tyler, the PD, driving and alcohol. These all seem to be hobbies for Bones. Then this guy corrects Jones by saying, instead of the biggest fight of my life, you mean the easiest fight in your life. Jones replies with, you can look past Stipe, I won't. We know that's not true. There was a leaked DM that allegedly he sent a fan, and the only reason I bring it up is because Daniel Cormier believes it was real. And in that DM, which could be fake, you know, just to disclose, it could be fake, he tells a fan that he knows that Stipe is old, and he's looking to make $15 million off of it. If Jones actually said this, if this was a real DM, it's such a scummy thing. He knows that Stipe is old, and out of his prime, not in the same shape, and he's looking to just get a bag out of him. This is like Floyd Mayweather tactics. He actually tells people, you can look past Stipe, I won't. Brother, if these DMs are true, you are looking past Stipe too. And you can. And that's the thing, you can. Because you'd beat him even if you looked past him. You'd beat him probably with your eyes closed. And this seems like a bit of disrespect to Stipe. Wait, hold on. Okay, that image is so foul. Friend, how dare you do that to Stipe? You know, but the point of everybody saying that he's old and all this stuff, but it's the facts. Everybody gets old in this game. And Stipe looks to have hit that point in his career. It'd be insane if he proved us all wrong and Stipe comes out there and actually gives Jones a tough fight. Not that, you know, Jones got old all of a sudden and that chest injury impacted his career. But let's just say Jones looks great and Stipe comes out there actually looking like his old self and gives a good fight to John Jones, that would be miraculous. And at that point, we all have to give Stipe an apology for even overlooking him like that. But it still doesn't defeat the actual argument itself. Even if Stipe is in the best form in his career, even if he's better than ever before, it should still be John Jones versus Tom Aspinall. Stipe would need to fight somebody else. He's been out for way too long to get an immediate rematch. That is the point of the whole debate. That's why the people are so annoyed of John Jones. Is because regardless of how good Stipe is, it should be Tom Aspinall next. Regardless, man. He's the interim champion. The number one contender. And then the final one, one of John Jones' fans tells him, ignore the haters, brother. You signed to fight Stipe before Aspinall won that contender belt. And Jones replies with, okay, so people understand that as clear as day, yet choose to ignore it. Good to know. Reminds me of a bunch of entitled little kids mad because the game isn't being played by the rules. So this fan is kind of correct, kind of not. It was officially signed that Jones was supposed to fight Stipe at UFC 295. Jones got injured. That's why they made that interim belt. And Tom Aspinall took it up on short notice. And he won the belt where a lot of people thought he was going to lose to Sergei Pavlovich, especially on short notice like that. He won the belt, gained everybody's respect, calls out John Jones, and Jones avoids him. So after that fight was over, the fight was not signed anymore. Now you have an interim champion. The game changed when Tom Aspinall got his hands on that belt. So when Tom was looking to fight Jones and all the fans wanted to see John Jones versus Tom Aspinall to unify the belts, that's when there was no fight signed between Stipe and Jones. And that's the focal point on all of this. That's the main thing everybody's talking about. It's irrelevant what happened before UFC 295. And Jones says everybody's mad like entitled little kids because the game is being played by their rules. Ah, yes. The fans made the rankings and the interim titles. If we created these rules, we would have stripped Jones from the championship. It's not written in stone, and the sport moves this way, sometimes favoring the superstars. But this was the intention with the rankings and the interim titles. You fight the number one contender, right? You 
you fight the interim champion, which is like above a number one contender. He's the champion as well as you are. What kind of champion doesn't want to unify the belts? I've never seen that. Look what Usyk just did with Tyson Fury. They look to unify the belts. Jones doesn't care about that because he wants to fight an old Stipe Miocic and just get money out of an easy fight. Instead of fighting as a champion, if he just relinquished his belt, nobody would care anymore. It'd be a win-win for everybody. We like to see Jones fight Stipe. We like to see Aspinall fight Curtis Blades for the undisputed title. Everybody wins at that point. That's the thing. People like to see order. We're sick of all these guys jumping the queue, leapfrogging contenders who are working their way to fight for the belt. It's happened way too often at this point. We want a return back to order. That's why we're also saying there should be a requirement of like three tall defenses before you look to jump up a division and fight for that belt because we want the order back. Fighters are doing that way too much. Now we got still this whole thing with super fights or money fights and they could just jump over credible contenders. These aren't our rules. These were the rules that were intended or that were said to be intended ever since the rankings got implemented in the sport. So are we going by the rankings or are we not going by the rankings? And he says that the people are entitled. Do you know who is entitled? Tom Aspinall. He's understandably and justifiably entitled. He's entitled to fight John Jones and everybody else agrees with it. The fans who are paying for the fight can also be seen as justifiably entitled. They're the ones who are paying for the fight. They want to see certain fights right? These are the consumers, the customers. They can complain. Fans can complain about fights that aren't happening, that should happen, right? This is not like we're complaining that John Jones isn't fighting Alexander Volkov or John Jones is not fighting Taito Ivasa. That's not what's happening here. That would be silly. The fans want to see the champions unify the titles. And John Jones disagreeing with that already tells us that he's only looking for these easier fights. We cannot forget that John Jones did the biggest ducking in UFC history by not fighting Tom Aspinall. I mentioned before that this was similar to the Bisbing and Whitaker situation but I took some John Jones dick pills and messed up my head and I was wrong on that. Michael Bisping and GSP were actually signed to fight each other before Robert Whitaker won the interim title and when GSP won the belt he vacated it making Robert Whitaker the undisputed champion. He didn't want to hold up the division. This is a bit different. Tom Aspinall won the title. Jones was not signed to fight anybody after and Jones still looks to fight Stipe Miocic and Tom is the one who defends his interim title first. Now of course it has to do with John Jones being injured but regardless, he didn't even want to fight Tom at all by that point. Insane. We can never forget John Jones did the biggest ducking in UFC history. With adding that to all the other controversies in his career. This is another reason why GSP is the GOAT.